everybody. Welcome to our webinar on healthcare apps. My name is Nicole and this is Angela and we're two of the librarians with the WHA Virtual Library. Uh, so this webinar is going to be recorded and it's going to be available for you to view after the presentation. If you have any questions, throughout, feel free to put them in the chat box because you're going to be muted by default. Uh, but you can also feel free to ask questions at the end. We'll stick around for a few minutes just in case anybody has any follow-up concerns that they might want to raise. All right, so the WHA Virtual Library, for anyone who might not be familiar with us, is a service provided to staff of the WHA. Uh, we do literature searches and systematic reviews. We provide electronic resources by subscription. Uh, we do document delivery services, so if there's anything that you want that we don't subscribe to, we can do our best to provide a copy of it for you. And finally, we do education and training, which includes our webinar series. This is the second of our winter webinar series. Um, you can see all the details on upcoming register, um, webinars and to register for them on our website, which is at the top of the page there. And of course, you can always get in touch with us if you'd like to book an appointment, send us an email. We're always happy to help if you want to follow up on what's being discussed in this webinar or learn more about our services. Uh, that's our website. We also have a blog, which is indicated by that little yellow orange arrow. Uh, that is where you would find information on new resources that have been added to the, uh, to the library or where we update you on upcoming webinars. So feel free to take a look at that and subscribe to that if you're interested. Now I'm going to pass it over to Angela, who's going to take over with this particular webinar. Okay, so our objectives today, we only have 30 minutes, so we want to make sure that you know how to navigate to uh, where we have app information on our website. We'll just take a look very briefly at what's happening with apps uh, and where they're going. Uh, we'll discuss a bit the benefits and challenges uh, presented by apps, as well as, most importantly, finding, selecting, and assessing the apps. And then we'll look at a couple of apps a little in more detail. So first of all, navigating to our website. Again, we have our URL up there. It would be a great idea if you shortcut that on your desktop. That way you have quick access to our home page. This is the home page. Uh, the tabs that are across the top there, home, get access, find information, all have drop down boxes. And the boxes that are below the search bar there have the same information. And that search bar there is how you can search across our catalog and some of the databases that we subscribe to for the WRJ. So from this web page, our home page, you would click on the find information tab and the drop-down box there, you would click on Toolkits. This is the page that uh, comes up when you hit Toolkits. We have several well-developed toolkits uh, for you here. You can see the topics. And for now, Apps is under Special Topics, so you would click on that tab. And then if you scroll down the page, we just have a few apps that are listed there. We encourage you to, if you have any uh, suggestions for new toolkits, topics, to let us know. These smaller ones, uh, such as the apps, could certainly be developed into a larger toolkit. Uh, and I want to just point out that the last um, listing there under apps is the Medical App Guide by the U of M. And that's not another resource of information that you could use for uh, learning more about apps. Uh, just be aware that it is developed for the U of M, so some of the apps that they have on there may only be available to the faculty, staff, and students. But they also offer several free ones uh, as well. So just to take a look at where the market is now with apps. Uh, in uh, 2016, this is a, uh, first of all, this is a, market analysis that was published in 2017. And as of 2016, they indicated that the app market was valued at $4.2 billion US, or $4.2 billion US. And it's expected to compound annually up until uh, 2025 they have here at a projected rate of 44.2%. So basically what this is showing you, just the uh, explosion of the apps market. Uh, they've also indicated that probably the apps that will be uh, 
in most demand will be fitness apps as well as the women's health segment will probably be the highest growth area. And the two platforms that are primarily used are Android and Apple. And I just wanted to show the screen just to give you the uh, a visual picture of the fact that apps are really taking off and exploding. Which means you have a lot of different options out there. Yeah, so that is one of the challenges of the apps. And I started uh, not with the benefits of the apps, but segued into the challenges of apps. There's lots of challenges, one of them being finding reputable ones. So for uh, reliable sources of apps, uh, apps, you definitely want to make sure that the app is reliable. You, if you're using, for example, a uh, medical calculator for dosage, you want to make sure that the algorithm on there is correct, otherwise you could do some serious harm. Uh, security and privacy uh, is certainly important. How is the information being uh, used? It's one thing if you are using a app that just logs information, but if it's an app that you share information, let's say from a patient to a healthcare provider, you're going to want to make sure that uh, the information is secure and private. And I've included up uh, below the picture there, and I've asterisked it, a uh, website that the uh, Privacy Commissioner of Canada has put out a, uh, a PDF on good privacy practices for developing mobile apps, just in case you're more curious as to what some of the issues are. Uh, the app world is certainly changing the clinician plant patient uh, relationship, uh, integrating it into the workplace. Uh, we are a medical field and it's highly regulated and locked down, so it's not always easy for you to use applications or new technology. Uh, we definitely wanna make sure that the content is current for the apps. There was an article in 2013 in JAMA Dermatology uh, which looked at, uh, the title was Diagnostic Inaccuracy of Smartphone Applications for Melanoma Detection. So there was an app for melanoma, melanoma detection, but it was determined, uh, that was investigated, and it was determined that it had way too low of sensitivity, and it was going to probably miss many melanomas. So that would, of course, be a very dangerous app to use for yourself or for, to recommend it to patients. And basically, standards or regulations, we are lacking them. Uh, there is some FDA regulation, but they do, it does not cover all apps. Uh, so we are definitely lacking any quality control there. But as you saw from that previous slide, there is an explosion of apps, and that's because there's plenty of benefits. Uh, as a healthcare provider, uh, it makes your job uh, much more convenient. If you have a good point of care tools, you can make better clinical decisions. Uh, you can improve your accuracy, your efficiency, and your productivity. So, and also for, uh, that's for clinicians, but also for patients, uh, it's useful for uh, treatment outcomes and helping with lifestyle choices, as well as sometimes reducing uh, incidence of chronic disease. Right, so you can have apps not just for your own use, but also that you can recommend to your patients for their use, for tracking fitness, for uh, monitoring their health, things like that. Yes, well. yeah. So, finding apps. A few different places that you can look. The easiest ones are Apple, uh, the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, and that's because they're easy to use and easy to understand. But you have to realize that you still need to work out and determine for yourself if they are based on evidence, uh, whether they're accurate or whether the uh, app is valid. Another place that you could look is in the scientific literature. Uh, I did a quick search in PubMed and I came across a very recent article on asthma and allergy mobile apps. Uh, there was another one for a scoping review for mental health apps and a third one was a systematic review on apps in pain management. So lots of reviews being done out there and you can take a look at those. Another place to find apps is using an app clearinghouse. So what's happening is various organizations are organizing and reviewing apps. Uh, we'll look at one in a bit more detail in a minute. 
And basically, they're assessing the usability, the functionality, the accuracy of the content. So if you're going to be selecting or recommending an app, then I would say your best bet is to stick with well-known publishers such as Elsevier, Walters Kluwer, or McGraw-Hill. They've published various apps. You can look uh, to professional organiza organizations, associations, or government bodies uh, such as the AHRQ, Public Health Agency of Canada, CDC. They have various apps that I would trust. And as I mentioned before, you can use a uh, credible sources such as uh, the Clearinghouse app that I mentioned before. There's uh, iMedical apps, or you could use journal reviews to find various apps. So just to take a closer look at iMedical apps, this is a, uh, on, um, an online medical publication that's produced by doctors, by allied health staff, and as well as medical students. And what they do is they review mobile technology and applications. So they're providing their experience with them. It covers iPhones, it covers Androids, iPad, as well as Blackberry devices. Uh, it's, you're able to search for apps, uh, the name of an app, or as you can see across the top there, they also list some top apps. You can search by medical specialty for, you know, if you wanted to find anesthesiology apps, you can do that. Or you can actually just look for patient apps as well. So that would be a, a place to, to uh, locate some information on apps. Now, a look in the literature shows that there's quite a few different checklists out there. There may not be standards or regulations uh, to cover all the apps, but there seems to be a proliferation of checklists. And which one you would use depends really on your context, your needs, and your expected outcomes. I've listed a few here and provided the citations for them. Uh, some of them are geared towards healthcare providers, some are geared for patients, and some are geared for healthcare providers to recommend to patients. So you can take a look at some of those. I wanted to leave you with this one. Uh, it is an app evaluation model put out by the uh, American Psychiatric Association. Uh, what I, why I like this one is it's a uh, hierarch hierarchical rating system as, as well as a rubric. So they have, and I have the URL at the bottom there as well, so you can look at it in full detail. And this is a bit of a synopsis. So you would work your way through these various sections, uh, asking yourselves uh, the different questions. For instance, background, who's the developer? Is there a conflict of interest if it's a pharmacy? Uh, pharmaceutical company putting out an app or they you know do they have a conflict of interest there when was it last updated you would go through all these questions and you would uh, apply a rubric so they have a rating scale of one two three one being uh, don't proceed with this this is not a good one two would be you have some concerns and three would be uh, proceed with it it looks like it's okay and then you would move to the next section and ask yourself questions about privacy and security, so forth. What I liked about this as well is they, they mention that there's no minimum for an app to decide whether it's a good one or not. Uh, you might have an app that you've uh, scored very low on, on these sections, but you might decide to go ahead and use it anyway and being aware of where its, where its faults are. Or you may have an app that scores really well, but for some reason you, yourself, or a patient that you might be recommending it to, decide not to use it. So it's a good guideline. So at this point, I'm gonna pass it back over to Nicole, and she'll walk you through a couple of uh, mobile apps that we would recommend for you. All right, thanks Angela. So the first one on our list is up to date. This is a subscription required app that's provided for you for free uh, by the WHA Virtual Library. We actually provide this particular app to all healthcare providers in Manitoba, regardless of their affiliation. Uh, but it's a little bit tricky to get because you can't just download the app and start using it. In order to verify your affiliation, 
you first have to use the desktop version. So you can get to that from our website by going under Find Information. There is a section for Up to Date. You would click that and you would get to the page that's currently displayed on your screen. From here, you would go to Search Up to Date on a desktop and it would recognize that you are accessing it through the WHA Virtual Library. And then you could create an account for yourself using whatever login information you choose to use. If there's a brief registration form you'd have to fill out. Once you've done that, then you can download the app from either the uh, Google Play Store or the App Store and log in with the same login information. And that will allow it to recognize that you are, in fact, part of the WHA. You have access through the WHA Virtual Library and therefore you have access to this subscription app. And you would have to actually redo that every 90 days in order to verify your affiliation just so that they can keep track of who's still working for the WHA and who isn't. That's how they track um, who has the right to access this app and who does not. So there are plenty of training materials for this app that are available. Some of them are listed on this page, but we're just gonna go briefly into the app itself and take a look at what it looks like on the next screen here. So this is what the app would basically look like when you launched it on your phone or a device. It allows you to do things like search up to date and up to date is essentially a point of care tool. It provides a summary of the literature on particular topics. Uh, they're typically geared towards um, clinical practice areas. So it's not just um, what is the, you can look at anything from what is the incidence or prevalence of a particular condition, but it also goes into more practical details like what are the various types of management that you would want to look at for this condition? Um, what is the prognosis? What's the evaluation? Often they have a lot of different sections that apply to your clinical practice. Uh, you can also browse by specialty areas. So if you're interested in all of the different um, evidence summaries in the area of dermatology, for example, that's something you could do. Something that's particularly useful with this app and a number of others on our list are, is the um, calculators section. So this provides a variety of different calculators that might be useful in clinical practice, ranging from very, very simple ones like converting Celsius to Fahrenheit temperatures, to um, doing a Braden score, doing a cardiac evaluation, all sorts of different calculators based on clinical guidelines and um, various ways of calculating not only mathematical operations of conversions, but also things like evaluations of a patient using a particular scale or tool, which can be really helpful if you're working at the bedside and want to quickly evaluate a patient. It also has the opportunity for CE or continuing education. Now, not all um, professional organizations recognize all sources of CE. Um, up to date is particular is recognized by the College of Family Physicians and a couple others. So if you're interested in this, you should definitely check with your own particular professional organization to see if this is uh, something they would recognize. But if it is recognized, then basically what that means for you is the app tracks how many of these practice summaries you read and then assigns you points of um, continuing education for that CE work that you've done in reading these articles and uh, improving your clinical knowledge. The other app that we wanted to briefly go into more detail about are is the set provided by NLM, which is the creators of PubMed. However, they also have an extensive list of other mobile apps that might be useful to you depending on your area of practice. These range from really specific ones like AIDS drug information to LactMed, which is uh, looking at the use of pharmaceuticals in lactation. Um, there's other drug databases and there's also some really cool ones that might be useful just for fun, like uh, looking at um, historical images, for example. But the one in particular we wanted to focus on today was PubMed. Uh, the app version is called PubMed for handhelds, and there's also the mobile web version called PubMed Mobile. And these allow you to search the PubMed database and find um, articles on uh, any topic of interest. The app actually provides what's called a Pico search. So you search by patient or population, intervention, comparator, and outcome to find really specifically articles that are useful for a clinical question that you might be interested in. And um, we've talked about PICO previously, but if you need more information on that, please feel free to follow up with us. We're happy to walk you through the process of developing the PICO question. It also allows you to search um, by article types. So you can look at specifically clinical trials versus systematic reviews, and has a number of other useful features that will help you search. So if we go on to the next screen here, we can take a look at um, 
PubMed Mobile. So this is the mobile version of their website, which is actually quite fully featured compared to a lot of mobile websites. It allows for full searching of the PubMed database using a lot of the same features that you would see in regular PubMed. And if you need a refresher on what you see in regular PubMed, we've done a recorded webinar on that for you that you can access through our website. But essentially, um, you can limit it by year, you can limit by article type, you can look at different mesh headings, which are medical subjects to help you uh, narrow down your indexing of a particular article that you're looking at. It's basically most of the features that you would find in regular PubMed, you can also access on mobile device, either through the app or through the mobile optimized website. So I'm now gonna pass it back over to Angela to briefly discuss a few other types of apps that we would recommend. So the next few slides, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. I just put this together because we're going to send out the slide deck to you so that you would have this as a resource in the future. So the, I just grouped together the various apps under uh, the different categories. Some of these are free, uh, some require an institutional membership, and some may require an association membership, uh, such as Dynamed. So we have point of care apps, we have drug reference. There are several different types of medical calculators. There's different apps for keeping current. Uh, these are just a few specialty healthcare apps as examples, but uh, certainly there's uh, many more that you could, we could find. Uh, there's personal or consumer health resources out there that you can use yourself or recommend for patients to use. Uh, as well as there's just general productivity uh, types of apps. And I wanted to mention too that a lot of websites are mobile friendly, so you could actually just shortcut them on your, on your uh, mobile devices, such as the DSM Lab Information Manual, or maybe more importantly, the WRHA Virtual Library. Make sure you shortcut that on your desktop or on your phone and you'll have quick access uh, to the library. So, so that concludes our presentation for today. Uh, we have the chat open for you if you have any questions that you want to ask right now, or you can also follow up with us later by phone or by email. We're happy to talk to you. And if you want to get, for example, personalized recommendations of what apps might be useful for you in your clinical area of practice, that's absolutely something we're happy to support. Just get in touch with us and we can have a chat with you about what might be most useful for you. So if you have any questions, uh, the chat box is open. Otherwise, thank you for listening, and the recording will be available within the next couple days. Perfect. I'll just mute us, but we'll stay on the line if you have any questions.